We note that the country is on the brink of sliding into anarchy. Violence meted on protesters and journalists is completely unwarranted and not proportionate to any imagined threat. Observing the events of the last couple of days, we notice acts of lawlessness. So we ask, is this the lowest the nation has sunk? Here is Brian Obuya with the context. Kenya is engaged in an unfortunate violent monologue. Political kingpins happy to let out their dogs of war. With every passing day, there is an indication that the country is inching closer to total chaos. There's reason to believe that the nation is sliding into anarchy. And here is why. The Britannica Encyclopedia defines anarchy as the absence of the rule of law or of a settled government. The events happening in Kenya the last three weeks have shown exactly that. A scenario where there exists no respect for authority and the law. Sadly, this has been exhibited by both government, opposition and civilians. It began with the government purporting to ban or suspend the opposition protests. That declaration was illegal and unconstitutional with zero backing of the law. The irony is, President Ruto has consistently maintained that the new order, in his words, is the rule of law. Thursday's was perhaps the most violent day of the demonstrations yet. Police used brute force on a scale not witnessed before and the protesters unleashing callous violence against the police in retaliation. Where there have been transgressions, we expect the police to do what they are supposed to do. People need to be arraigned in court. In short, we expect to follow the law. In the dark of the night, several businesses were looted, property destroyed by goons with no police in sight. That as seen in the happenings on Northland City, the property of President Uhuru Kenyatta's family and the vandalism that was directed at the Odinga families respect International Limited. Such acts clearly showing how slippery the situation is. Kenya has slipped into the path of disorder, ultimately degenerating into lawlessness. The three protests have been characterized by a clash of egos and senseless chest thumping with no voice of reason at hand. In Nairobi, this clash between the police and the protesters has brought the city to a standstill with several people enduring untold physical harm, shutdown of commercial enterprises, threatening lives and livelihoods. The nation has been standing in the rain and enduring the now bi-weekly demos. There exists evidence of hooliganism by police officers in Eastlands, painting the picture of criminals in police uniform roaming in the streets and protected from scrutiny. The police have sunk even lower, roughing up protesters, brutalizing journalists and vandalizing cars. There is every indication that the police may be on a political expediency appearing under instruction to stop the protests rather than guarding life and property. And this is a danger, and that is why clearly you saw the, the, the response to the Northland uh, invasion, what happened at Spectre, and we saw police in action. They were waiting for word to come from somewhere. The silence from President Ruto, Deputy President Rigathi Gashagua, Inspector General Jafet Kome and the interior CS Kithure Kindiki lend credence to that imagination. In fact, Jafet Kome has congratulated his police officers for the violence, the maiming of journalists and the killing of young men in Eastlands. He says they did a good job. We have a police service that has taken sides in the whole uh, scene. Brian. Obuya, NTV.